when you run from God is when you run from your calling. I want us to see from the scripture that disobedience is not limited to doing something that harms you. It's also doing something that hurts others. Jonah wasn't doing anything that was harming himself but by not going out in his calling he was hurting other people. I want you to write this down. Disobedience to God's call puts people close to you in great danger. Jonah put people around him in great danger when he disobeyed God's call. Your co-workers will probably go to hell if you disobey God. That's the way it is. Your family members, how many people, I, and I will not ask for raising of the hands, when you started to obey God's call in your life, your family is now in church. What would happen if you would have been disobedient? They wouldn't be here. And this is only in a year or two. What would happen if you're continuing in the call of God? The, the other family members, because you're praying and you're fasting for them, they will come to know God. When we are not living out our call, guys, we are causing people to go to hell. We're putting in danger those around us. It's like wearing a suicide vest in the marsh pit and thinking it's only going to hurt you. It's going to hurt those that are close to you when you disobey the call of God for your life. God calls us out of response to people calling on Him in their pain. God calls us in response to people crying to Him out of their pain. We don't hear the cry of people. When God talks on our heart and tells us, you know, invite your co-worker, pray for your friend. When God talks on your heart, pray for your family. Fast for your family to know the Lord. When God talks on your heart, it's God doesn't call you until His voice messages have been overloaded with the cries and tears of the people He's calling you to reach. When God called on Moses after 40 years of wilderness, it's because the cup of tears of, e of Israelites in Egypt has reached to overflow. And God called the number, dialed Moses' number, said, Moses, you have to go to Egypt. And Moses starts coming up with excuses. He says, I can't speak. I can't go back there. I'm most wanted man in Egypt. I don't have the ability. I don't have the connections. I don't have the army. I've tried it. It didn't work. But God says, Moses, you don't hear the cry. I don't call you because I have nothing to do. I don't call you because now you're just in the wilderness wasting your life. I call you because so many calls came in and I can't ignore that. You don't hear that. That's why I'm calling you. When God called our church, it's because God heard the cries of families and young people in Tri Cities. And now we hear their testimonies. But we also hear that when God was calling us to pray for them, they were calling on God to send someone to reach them. You know, I remember when I was trying to invite my neighbor to church. I live very close to church. And uh, I kept postponing it until I find the right time. And one time I went rollerblading with my wife and she said that I, I feel this heaviness that something is, is not right with our neighbor. We haven't seen him in a in few, few weeks. We came back home and I quickly googled his name and looked at the newspaper and I found out his obituary. And when the real estate agent who was selling the house invited me to see the house, which was also kind of weird, but I went into the house and I saw a cut carpet in the middle of the living room. And the real estate agent told me that he committed suicide. He was a retired vet who committed a suicide in his house. And that's why for two months I haven't seen him. You know, something really hit me hard. Because at that moment when God was tugging, see God didn't push me. He just tugged on my heart. Invite him. God was seeing that he was contemplating to kill himself. God was seeing that he was medicating himself with alcohol. God was hearing the cry. So when God whispers to you, it's because somebody's been screaming to him. We don't hear that. When God whispers to you, it's because he's responding to somebody crying to him. When God whispers to our church, thousands locally and millions globally, it's because thousands and millions are already crying out to God. 
it's because mothers are saying who how my son is on drugs my daughter is strangled my daughter is doing all of this stuff somebody please there is a God please somebody help me and God goes into a church he dials their number and he says could you please go reach out to others but we don't hear the cry in the voice of God we hear a whisper so we think it's not urgent because God is not beating us and God is not screaming because God doesn't let us God filters the cries of the generation and lets you hear his whisper but in reality that whisper has a cry behind it and I don't want us to live a life I lived with that regret and I made a promise to myself that there'll be not one service whether it's in a small house which has 10 people or whether it's in a large camp or a crusade I will give an altar call all the time because this is my platform and I will see people come to know the Lord because that person's life could be the last time there will be that person that walked in see I think I know almost everybody here but I don't know those people who came for the first time or the second time who honestly on the last straw and they have a gun loaded in their house or a bottle of pills to end their life with and so I make a decision to myself and I ask you that you do the same when God calls we pick up we pick up why because we are an answer to someone else's scream are you with me I want you to see this God will give you success if you sacrifice your life that sailors don't lose theirs in the storm I always looked at Jonah as being a selfish perk selfish spoiled brat he didn't want to see revival ran from God but my perspective changed this week because I asked myself why did Jesus compare himself to Jonah in the Bible but not no other prophet now we understand because Jonah spent three days in the belly of the fish, Jesus spent three days in the ground. But there is something about Jonah that is always, mis that is always ignored. Is the fact Jonah without God telling him to do this, without sailors giving him the idea, he told the people he didn't know, they were not his family. He said, this storm will end if I die and I volunteer. And God in heaven saw a man who was willing not only to give, give up his Snapchat and Instagram. He wasn't willing to take a break from watching Netflix. Jonah wasn't just willing to give 10% to the missionary. Jonah was willing to step and literally commit suicide. So the guys he did not know will have a chance to live. And God when he saw that, he said that's exactly what my son will do thousands of years later he will step from the corridors of heaven he will come on this earth and people that abandoned and rejected him he will give his life for them and because of that Jesus came on this earth and he says God will not give you any other sign than the sign of Jonah Jonah died the people he didn't know will find safety and Jesus died the people he loved will find salvation